One of the most desirable products of the oceans which surround our country is shrimp. It is sought out and enjoyed by millions of people every year. The shrimp fishery of the southeast United States is the most productive in the country, annually producing over 125 million pounds of shrimp. The most important tool in the harvesting of shrimp is the trawl. It must be used effectively and efficiently for the shrimp fishermen to show a profit. Over the years, many changes have been made in the design of shrimp nets and rigging. This film will describe the principal nets in use today, compare the net types and how they are rigged, and look at the expected efficiency of each. The first step in understanding a net design and what makes it different is understanding the basic construction of a net. The net components are viewed here, beginning with the doors used to spread the net. The leg lines extend from the door to the wings of the net. The different webbing components of a shrimp trawl are color-coded for easier illustration. The top and bottom of the net body are shown in black. The wings, attached to the top and bottom, are yellow. The corner pieces are shown in red. They are used to give a good curved shape to the net and to properly distribute the webbing. Then, viewing back along the body, the net tapers back to a smaller size. At the end of the trawl body is the throat of the net where an extension is placed. This extension is optional depending on the net maker or boat captain preferences. Finally, at the end of the net is the bag or cod end. The lazy line is attached to the cod end using an elephant ear shown in yellow. Each net was rigged identically and carefully tuned to operate properly. Adjusted correctly, the center of the net foot rope operates four to six inches above the bottom. At the wing sections, the foot rope may be slightly higher above the bottom unless additional weight is added. Scuba divers assisting with the filming will measure the spread and height of each trawl. Two other measurements will be determined for each net. The first is the drag of the trawl or tension in the towing cable. This is the actual amount of tension in the cable caused by the drag of the net, doors and bridles through the water. Part of the efficiency of each net type is its drag because this drag affects fuel consumption on the vessel. The second measurement for each net will be twine area. In simple terms, twine area represents the surface area of all the meshes in a trawl as if it were one solid piece of material. Twine area is the solid area of the net without the webbing holes. Twine area is used for the comparisons of net designs because it is a constant unit of measurement that is comparable in each design. It allows us to directly compare one net design to another without the confusion of tapers and hanging ratios and overcomes the problem of comparing a single net to a twin trawl system. Each net design and its performance data will be shown to 1. Describe the design difference between each net type. 2. Compare drag and spreading efficiency of each net type. And 3. Describe increased efficiency that is possible with the tongue trolls and the twin troll rigging system. To allow a direct comparison, the troll size and rigging were standardized. 50 feet was chosen for the net size. The same set of doors, 7 feet by 36 inches, were used on each net. Each net was towed on a set course under the same conditions at a fixed towing speed of 2.5 knots. 40 fathom bridles were used and door chain settings were the same. The trolls were constructed from number 15 twine, 1 and 7 eighths nylon webbing to exact specifications of head rope length and hanging ratios. The trolls were pulled by the Georgia Bulldog, a 72 foot wood shrimp trawler powered by a D343 turbocharged and after cooled Caterpillar engine with a 6 to 1 reduction gear and a 60 diameter 50 pitch propeller. A survey of the shrimp industry was conducted to determine the movie content. A questionnaire was distributed asking each reviewer to suggest what gear should be covered in the filming. 
based on the suggestions, the following trawls will be described and their operational efficiency demonstrated. Conventional net design. Flat, four-seam semi-balloon, western jib, two-seam. New net and rigging design, tongue trawls, bib, three-wing trawls, and twin trawls. These net types and rigging designs were the ones most often identified as being of interest to fishermen. We begin our design comparisons with the flat net, which consists of a top and bottom panel and two wings. The distinguishing characteristic of a flat net is the construction of its corner pieces. They are cut to form a triangle. The tapered edges of the corners are sewn to the body and wing. This method of construction allows the towing strain to be transferred along the bars of the webbing. The flat net has a total twine area of 213 square feet. It spreads 74% of its head rope length, has a vertical height of 3 feet, and its total drag is 1,350 pounds. The balloon, or two-seam net, is constructed from a top and bottom panel and no wings. The top and bottom panels are joined directly to each other, forming the two seams. An additional corner, called a jib corner, shown in white, is added to provide strength between the body and the main corner piece. The balloon net has a total twine area of 201 square feet. It spreads 77% of the head rope length, provides a vertical height of 3 feet, and has a total drag of 1,350 pounds. The semi-balloon net has characteristics of both the flat and balloon net designs. It has two wings, which give it a four-seam body design similar to the flat net. The corner pieces, however, resemble those of the balloon troll. It also uses a jib corner for added strength. The net has a twine area of 248 square feet. It spreads 74% of its head rope length, has a vertical height of 3.5 feet, and its total drag is 1,550 pounds. The jib net, or western jib, is similar to the flat net. It differs from the flat in the construction of its corner pieces. The wing sewing edge of the corner is cut to allow the webbing to pull in the same direction as the webbing in the wing. Some net makers add a small jib corner, shown in this net. The jib net has a twine area of 233 square feet. It spreads 78% of its head rope length, has a vertical height of 2.5 feet, and its total drag is 1,700 pounds. The tongue, or bib net, is a relatively new net design concept. Its characteristic feature is the tongue of webbing extending forward from the top panel and connecting to a third central bridle. The purpose of the design is to reduce the net and cod end load on the doors by transferring a portion of load to the tongue and central bridle, allowing the more horizontal spread. Any conventional shrimp net can be converted by adding a tongue and additional bridle leg. This is the mongoose, one of the most successful tongue trawl designs in use. The mongoose design is unique in that the tongue is built into the top panel. The corners, top body panel, and tongue are all cut from one section of webbing. The twine area of the mongoose is 266 square feet. It spreads 78% of its head rope length, has a vertical opening of three and a half feet, and a total drag of 1,800 pounds. A recently introduced tongue trawl is the scorpion. The scorpion construction is similar to the mongoose, except that it incorporates a different bottom corner. The twine area for the scorpion is 226 square feet. It spreads 83% of its head rope length, has a vertical opening of three and a half feet, and a total drag of 1,750 pounds. Another type of tongue net is the three-wing trawl, which has a tongue on both the top and bottom sections. It can be fished using either a sled or a bullet and float combination. This three-wing has a twine area of 271 square feet. 
It spreads 85% of its head rope length, has a vertical height of three and a half feet, and a total drag of 2,100 pounds. A significant innovation in shrimp trawl gear is the twin trawl, introduced in the early 70s. The twin trawl is a rigging modification which uses four nets, two from each outrigger. This rigging configuration is more efficient and produces larger catches than a double rig, but requires an additional bridle and sled. With a twin trawl, more total head rope length can be towed with less horsepower. The twin trawls contain less webbing and can be spread with smaller doors. This is demonstrated by comparing the performance of a 50-foot flat net to twin 35-foot flat nets. Both rigs are spread efficiently with 7 by 36 doors, but the twin nets have a total head rope length of 70 feet, 21 feet more than the single 50-foot net. Research has shown that for the same fuel consumption, twin trawls can sweep a larger total area than double rig trawls with a comparable twine area. Another way to demonstrate the efficiency of the twin rig is to compare the twine area of a 70-foot flat net to the twine area of two 35-foot flat nets. The 70-foot net has a total twine area of 350 square feet compared to 267 square feet for the two 35-foot flat nets. The twin rig spreads a total of 56 feet, or 78% of the combined head rope lengths. The vertical opening of each net is 3 feet, and the total towing tension, or drag, is 1,750 pounds. A comparison of trawl performance shows that the three-wing had a spread ratio of 85% with a towing tension of 2,100 pounds. The Scorpion had an 83% spread ratio with 1,750 pounds of towing tension. The Mongoose had a spread ratio of 78% with a towing tension of 1,800 pounds. The Western Jib also has a spread of 78%, but its towing tension is 1,700 pounds. The Balloon has a spread ratio of 77% with a tension of 1,350 pounds. The semi-balloon and flat nets have an identical spread ratio of 74%, but the towing tension is 200 pounds less for the flat. A comparison of the tongue trawl types with the twin trawl of comparable twine area shows that the twin trawls spread an average 37% more. Now this allows the twin trawl to sweep a greater area for the same amount of fuel. An important factor in trawl performance is the relationship between the size of the door and the size of the net. The doors provide the spreading force which opens the net to its fishing shape. If the doors are too large, they overspread the net and burn more fuel. If the doors are too small, the net will not be spread to its most efficient configuration. There are differences in opinion among fishermen as to the best door size for any given net and the best size may be different for different vessels, types of bottom, and the way trawls are rigged. The effect of varying door size on trawl performance will be demonstrated for the 50-foot semi-balloon, flat, and bib nets, and the 35-foot twin flat rig. The 50-foot semi-balloon with 7 by 36 doors spreads 74 percent, has a vertical height of 3 and a half feet, and a towing tension of 1,550 pounds. With 6 by 36 doors, the semi-balloon spread 68%, has a vertical height of 3.5 feet, and the drag is 1,350 pounds. The net is underspread, and the foot rope is digging into the bottom. When 9 by 40 doors are used on the same net, the spread increases to 84%, and the vertical height is 3 feet. The drag increases to 2,400 pounds. The net is overspread, and is fishing off the bottom. Continuing the same comparison with a flat net, we have shown that the net spread is 74%, has a vertical height of 3 feet, and a drag tension of 1,350 pounds when using 7 by 36 doors. When 6 by 36 doors are used, the flat net spreads 66%. It opens 3 feet vertically, and the total drag is 1,250 pounds.
Using 9 by 40 doors, the spread increases to 85%, and vertical height is 3 feet, towing tension increases to 2,100 pounds. The tongue net shown here with the 7 by 36 doors spreads 78%. It opens 3 and a half feet with a towing tension of 1,800 pounds. Using 6 by 36 doors, it spreads 70% has a vertical height of 3 feet and a towing tension of 1,500 pounds. With 9 by 40 doors, the net spreads 86% with a vertical height of 3 feet. The towing tension has increased to 2,350 pounds. The 35-foot twin rig shown here spread 78% when fished with the 7 by 36 doors. Each net has a vertical opening of 3 feet. The measured towing tension is 1,750 pounds. With 6 by 36 doors, the twin rig spreads 73 percent and has a vertical opening of 3 feet. The towing tension is 1,700 pounds. For increased stability, 8 by 40 doors are commonly used with 34 to 36 foot twin rigs in the Gulf of Mexico. The 35 foot twin nets spread 85 percent with the 8 by 40 doors and have a vertical opening of three feet. The towing tension is 2,400 pounds. With seven by 36 doors, the 50-foot trawls have a spread ratio between 74 and 78 percent, and towing tensions between 1,350 and 1,800 pounds. The seven by 36 door is considered the optimum size door for 50-foot trawls by most fishermen. When six by 36 doors are used, the trawls have spread ratios between 66 and 73 percent. The tongue trawl and twin 35-foot trawls are more efficient with the smaller doors than the semi-balloon and flat trawls. When 9 by 40 doors are used, the spread ratios increase to 84 to 86 percent. The nets are overspread, fishing off the bottom, and the towing tension increases to between 2,100 and 2,400 pounds. The towing chain attachment system of the troll doors, referred to as the door chains, is adjustable. The setting of the door chains determines the angle of attack and the tilt and heel of the doors. These adjustments control its spreading efficiency and the amount of bottom contact. In normal trolling conditions, the angle of attack is between 35 and 45 degrees, depending on the towing speed and other conditions. If the angle of attack is too small or too great, the spreading efficiency of the doors is decreased, reducing the trawl spread. Another factor which affects trawl performance is flotation attached to the net. The amount of flotation determines the vertical height of the net and affects the horizontal spread. The effect of flotation devices will be demonstrated on the 50-foot semi-balloon, flat and tongue nets with 7 by 36 doors. The semi-balloon, rigged with 18 6x8 sponge X floats, has a vertical opening of 8 feet at the center of the head rope and is spread 62%. Rigged with 12 floats, the vertical height is reduced to 7 feet and the spread is 64%. With 6 floats, the height is 5 feet and the spread 66%. The flat net, rigged with 18 floats, opens 10 feet and spreads 62 percent. With 12 floats, the trawl opens 8.5 feet and the spread remains 62 percent. With 6 floats, the height is 6.5 feet and spreads 66 percent. The tongue net opens 13 feet and has a spread of 60% when rigged with 18 floats. With 12 floats, it opens 11 feet with a spread of 68%.
With six floats, it opens seven and a half feet and spreads 74%. Some fishermen use a long line float on the tongue trawl. With a 50 inch long line float enclosed in webbing, this tongue net has a vertical height of 12 feet and spreads 70%. It was observed that the long line float produced more lift when not enclosed in webbing. Adding flotation to a shrimp net dramatically changes its fishing configuration. Vertical height increases while the horizontal spread decreases. The optimum amount of flotation to use depends on the fishing conditions and behavior of the shrimp. The tongue net achieved the maximum height while maintaining the best spread. The flat net opened higher than the semi balloon with the same horizontal spread. A tickler chain is used on trawls to stimulate shrimp causing them to jump off the bottom and pass over the foot rope into the net. The most common sizes used are quarter inch and five sixteenth inch diameter chain. The length of the tickler chain used by fishermen varies. Incorrectly rigged or improperly functioning tickler chains can significantly lower shrimp catch rates. The tickler chain must operate ahead of the foot rope and behind the head rope of the trawl for best results. The distance that the tickler chain fishes ahead of the foot rope can be adjusted. The best setting for shrimp production varies between gear types and trawling conditions. The tickler chain setting has some effect on net configuration. Rigged with a quarter inch diameter tickler chain set 48 inches shorter than the foot rope, the flat net spreads 70 percent. The tickler chain fishes 32 inches ahead of the foot rope at the center of the trawl and 18 inches ahead at the net wings. When the chain is set at 36 inches shorter than the foot rope, it fishes 24 inches in front of the foot rope and the net spread increases to 76 percent. At a setting of 24 inches, the tickler chain fishes 18 inches ahead of the foot rope in the center, but only 9 inches in the wing. The position of the tickler chain in the wings can be improved by moving the attachment point 18 to 21 inches forward on the door. This allows the chain to fish 22 inches ahead of the foot rope in the wings. An equal amount of chain must be added to compensate for the new attachment point. This improves the catch without affecting the trawl configuration. Trawls are sometimes rigged with mud rollers to prevent them from bogging in soft bottom. Mud rollers slide along the bottom under the trawl foot rope. The type most commonly used is a plastic cylinder device attached to the foot rope at three to six foot intervals. A common rigging problem is the incorrect attachment of the rollers, which causes them to flip inside the trawl, making them ineffective. This problem can be avoided by tying the rollers to the foot rope at two foot intervals or tying the rollers back under the trawl. Dropback is a term used to describe the technique of lengthening the leg lines on the bottom of the trawl. This adjustment affects how close to the bottom the foot rope fishes. Under normal conditions, the leg lines are the same length on the head rope and foot rope. Dropback is used to increase the ground contact of the foot rope, making the trawl fish harder. Adding dropback also makes the door heel, bringing the back of the door closer to the bottom. On most trawls, the maximum amount of dropback used is 12 inches. More than 12 inches can cause the trawl to become distorted and is not effective. The leg lines are set even on this flat trawl. The foot rope is fishing six to eight inches above the bottom in the wings and three inches in the center. With 12 inches of dropback, the foot rope is fishing four inches above the bottom in the wings and one and a half inches in the center. The catch rates depend on the area swept by the trawl, which is determined by the speed of the trawl and its spread. 
Towing speed is one of the most critical factors in determining trawl performance and efficiency. The speed of the net and doors through the water and the resultant drag and lift forces affect the trawl spreading efficiency and fuel consumption rate. Most shrimp vessels tow their trawls between two and a half and three knots. The best towing speed varies between vessels and the gear being used. The performance characteristics of a 50-foot flat net with seven by 36 doors at two, two and a half, three, and three and a half knots demonstrates the variability in performance at different towing speeds. At two knots, the net foot rope is fishing on the bottom in the center and four inches in the wings. The spread is 66 percent, the towing tension is 1,100 pounds, and the measured fuel consumption rate is 2.2 gallons per hour. This speed, the doors are unstable, and the net is fishing hard on the bottom. When the speed is increased to two and a half knots, the doors become more stable and the foot rope height increases to three inches in the center and four inches in the wings. The spread is 70 percent. The towing tension increases to 1,500 pounds and the fuel consumption rate increases 32 percent. At three knots, the horizontal spread increases to 74 percent. The foot rope is four inches from the bottom in the center and six inches in the wings. Fuel consumption increases another 24 percent and the towing tension is 2,300 pounds. At three and a half knots, the trawl spread decreases to 70 percent. The foot rope is seven inches from the bottom in the center and 10 inches in the wings. Fuel consumption increases an additional 45 percent and the towing tension is now 3,000 pounds. At four knots, the net and doors leave the bottom. Fuel consumption only increases another 5%, and the tension is 3,500 pounds. At five knots, the towing tension is almost 5,000 pounds, with fuel consumption increasing yet another 48%. Dyes allow us to see the water flow patterns in a trawl. Water flow characteristics influence the drag of the trawl, and therefore fuel consumption, and also affect the behavior of the marine organisms encountering the trawl. Here, we can follow the water flow entering the trawl mouth as it passes through the net. Water entering the wing area passes directly through the webbing. Water in the center of the net is funneled into the cod end. As trawling speed increases, more water enters the net than can exit, creating turbulence ahead of the cod end. Water flow in the cod end is minimal. Methods to improve water flow can increase trawling efficiency by reducing drag and transporting shrimp more directly into the cod end, reducing loss through net meshes. Twine area, the estimate of the total surface area of a net, is useful for comparing the efficiency of different trawls. To demonstrate the effect of surface area on net performance, two identical 50-foot flat nets were constructed, one from number 15 twine, the other from number 18 twine. The net constructed from number 15 twine has a surface area of 213 square feet. Towed at two and a half knots, its spread is 74 percent and the total drag is 1,350 pounds. The net constructed from number 18 twine has a surface area of 245 square feet. This net spreads only 70 percent and has a total drag force of 1,500 pounds. Increasing the twine diameter from number 15 to number 18 increases the total surface area by 32 square feet. This results in an increased towing tension and reduces the spread by 4%. The tongue, or bib net, has been shown to be an extremely efficient design. It has some unique characteristics which require different rigging adjustments. The basic principle of the design is to reduce the total net and cod end load on the doors by transferring a portion of it to the center bridle. 
The bib or tongue pulls upward and inward on the trawl door, whereas the leg lines on a non-bib net pull back and inward on the door. This change in forces can cause the heel of the door and foot rope to lift off the bottom. This reduces the catching efficiency of the bib trawl. It usually occurs in deeper water, where the angle of the bridles is greater. This problem can be solved by several methods. The scope ratio is the ratio of the wire length to water depth. Increasing the scope ratio of the towing wire allows the doors to tend bottom by changing the angle of the forces acting on the door. The bib trawl is being fished with a scope ratio of three to one. The doors are nosing in and the foot rope is off the bottom. Increasing the scope ratio to five to one allows the door to fish normally and brings the foot rope closer to the bottom. At a ratio of 10 to one, the doors are fishing hard and the foot rope is on the bottom. Other rigging adjustments which can increase the bottom contact of the foot rope include adding additional weight to the back of the door, and adding more loop chain to the foot rope. A critical adjustment on the bib trawl is the center bridle length. The bridles most commonly used by the shrimp industry are 40 to 50 fathoms long, with the three legs of the bridle equal in length. Most bib nets are constructed with the bib approximately the same depth as the corners, requiring an extension on the middle bridle leg to compensate for the length of the leg lines and doors. Tension on the middle bridle cable is an important factor in adjusting the bib trawl. When the twin trawl system was first developed, standard four seam nets were commonly used. As the success of tongue nets became apparent, they were incorporated into the twin trawl system. This requires a five bridle system. There are two techniques for rigging the five bridle system. One method is to use five bridle legs of equal length. An alternate method is to splice the tongue bridle into the door bridle. Using 300 foot bridles with a tongue wire spliced halfway up the outside bridles, the twin 48 foot mongoose nets shown here are spreading 60 feet with a head rope height of 10 feet. When five bridles of equal length are used, the trawl spreads 70 feet with a vertical height of nine feet. The spliced bridles caused a 10 foot decrease in spread. Another modification which requires a change in bridling technique is the weight and float rig, sometimes known as a bullet rig. Some fishermen feel that this rig provides greater versatility than the sled with its fixed point. Fishermen continue to incorporate new methods to improve the productivity of their trawling gear. Shrimp trawl doors have traditionally been constructed from wood. The advantage of wooden doors has been simple construction and inexpensive materials. However, high quality wood has become more difficult to obtain and as a result, more expensive. Wooden doors under normal shrimping conditions have a life expectancy of approximately six months. A disadvantage of wood doors is that they are fairly easy to damage their useful life is limited by deterioration and waterlogging. As a result, aluminum and plastic are being introduced as a construction material at competitive prices. Since metal does not have the same flotation characteristics as wood, it is necessary to add flotation to each door to achieve proper balance. This door has three ballast tanks and weighs 450 pounds. Aluminum doors can perform as well as wood doors and can be produced at a price competitive with wood. Aluminum doors should significantly outlast wood and perform more consistently in deeper water. They can be as much as 60% lighter than wood doors. The performance of 7x36 aluminum doors is demonstrated with a 50-foot flat net. The net spread is 75% and trawl tension is 1,500 pounds. Plastic is also being evaluated as a material to replace wood in trawl doors. Many plastic compounds are now available and some of them offer weight, strength and durability characteristics that are better than metal. 
If price is competitive, plastics may become a construction material superior to either wood or metal. A plastic door fabricated to steel shoes and frame is shown here. The plastic used is very strong and has a much better corrosion resistance than metal. The thickness of the plastic can be chosen so that the weight and balance of the door underwater is basically the same as wood. One material used for troll door construction is an exothermal polymer which has been tested for about two years. Results of these tests indicate that these doors should have a life expectancy up to five times that of wooden doors. The National Marine Fisheries Service has developed a trawling efficiency device called TED that significantly increases a fisherman's trawling time. Originally designed to exclude sea turtles, the TED also excludes jelly balls, sharks, skates, rays, horseshoe crabs, and loggerhead sponge from the catch. The TED device uses slanted bars to guide unwanted catch through a top opening door. To ensure that no shrimp loss occurs while the door of the trawl is open, a piece of webbing shaped like a funnel is placed directly in front of the deflector bars. This funnel accelerates the water flow through TED, ensuring that weak swimmers like shrimp pass through the device into the cod end. Without the funnel, shrimp loss can occur. Perhaps the most important benefit of TED is that it can be used to release much of the fin fish from the bycatch. During daytime fishing, a reduction rate of 75% is possible, and at night, as much as 60%, depending on the species of fish in the catch. To accomplish these rates, a fish deflector must be placed directly behind the main deflector bars of TED. The fin fish reduction feature is optional, since the webbing around TED has to be cut to allow fish to escape. The latest TED design is collapsible for easy handling or storage and can be constructed from steel or fiberglass. As fuel costs, labor costs, and other expenses of operating a shrimp boat continue to rise, the necessity of operating as efficiently as possible becomes more and more important. The National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration and State Marine Extension Specialists are working with fishermen to develop more efficient trawling gear and techniques. But the biggest responsibility belongs to the boat operators themselves. The responsibility to stay open to new ideas. Thank you.